Hi Sagittarius, welcome to your February 2018 love reading. It's Raina here. Shuffling the cards. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. So, first off, obviously this is a general reading, so it may resonate with you with a few of the cards. Sometimes people actually are like, oh my god, it's exactly what's happening to me. But, um... Maybe not so much. It all depends. If you'd like a private reading, please click on the link below. It will take you to my online store at rainandmoonastrology.com. And just to let you know, most of my readings, I'm using your natal chart. So it's not just about the cards, although the cards are awesome. Um, they're really... I, I use the, the tarot on... YouTube a lot because it lends itself uh, very well to that type of reading. You know, it, it's um, the the tarot is open ended enough that you can really let your imagination go uh, wild, and a lot of people can identify with the same reading, which is important when you're doing this type of reading. Um, but when I do personal readings, I really do focus most mainly on the natal, natal chart in most of my readings. So that's um, it's a totally different animal. But anyway, back to the, this uh, little party we've got here. For the overall theme or focus, we have the Six of Cups, which is a card of the soulmate. Maybe twin flames, I don't know. But I think it's more like soulmate because there's a real kind of folksy, sentimental vibe to this. It's not, uh, this, from what I understand about twin flames, it's like, that can be hellacious. And this is um, really like reminiscent. I was thinking of that song, uh, uh, Reminiscent, uh, by... Uh, Little River Band. <laughs> I really, that's one of my favorite songs. But um, but the thing is, like, uh, whether this is a soulmate or someone that you used to date long ago, that you're like, hey, I wonder whatever happened to that person. Or maybe it's even more serious than that. Maybe you've actually uh, have been in contact with someone. You just um, may be fixated on this particular person or hoping for a soulmate situation. I guess it's possible that you don't know the specific person that you're, um, you're fixated on, that you're just looking for that type of relationship. But um, the two cards that... <clears throat> excuse me. The two cards that flank it. As the past position, we have the Ten of Wands which can be the heavy lifting card, um, either exerting too much influ um, energy onto something without really experiencing that kind of mutual interest. So if you have been holding on to a dream of someone and maybe you've been contacting them multiple times, uh, hoping that you can get back together with someone or at least get in contact with them. And, and it seems like it's a one-way street. 
that that's what the Ten of Wands could indicate. Also, if you're just working at your job or you have a lot of responsibilities, it may be hard to make time for any kind of romance or there's something that's preventing you from having this happen. I will say that if the, uh, the first thing that I mentioned, if you are trying to make something happen with someone and you're not getting any kind of positive response, then I would definitely not keep doing it. And this is a trap that some people fall into where they just double down and they try even har harder. Sometimes that can work when you're trying to achieve a career goal or something along those lines. But with other pe when you're dealing with people and you try to force them, that's not a good plan. You want to always pursue relationships where there is a mutual thing happening. If you're the one that's doing the heavy lifting, always calling, always arranging, always showing the interest in the other person, it's almost like chasing the person, that's not going to work. It can be, too, that you're dealing with an entirely different relationship where you feel the sense of burden, where it is all about you. And so you go into your mind at this fantasy relationship, either a relationship from your past or a fantasy version of what the perfect relationship is. And that keeps you going. What's happening right now is represented by the Nine of Swords, which this is a card of anxiety. And so maybe you were able to sustain yourself through fantasy for a while, and now it's getting real. Now either... Um, so much time has gone by that you have started to feel that you are living in a dream world. You may feel like, oh, what, what am I, why do I even imagine that I could meet my soulmate? I must be, I must be like um, delusional. And never get that bad, okay? Um, the Nine of Swords is really a card where you may be exaggerating your problems to yourself. And it's really because this is a card of being alone with your thoughts. And if you're not used to being uh, positive, or first of all, uh, Sagittarians are very positive, but you may uh, be overly reliant on other people's company in order to boost your spirits. And maybe it's when you're alone that you st your mind starts to, to go into these dark places. And if you make a conscious effort to practice meditation and things of that nature, you may train your mind to be your friend and not to turn on you, which is what the Nine of Swords is all about. Um, it could be that you're dealing with a fire sign that's problematic and uh, even maybe there's two people involved because I do see that the spiritual message is the three of swords. So this could be like a lover's triangle. Maybe there's a fire sign, Leo, Sag, or Aries. Uh, and then there's also a uh, an air sign, Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius. And as a higher message, you could be talking about um, this lover's triangle. Now, this is a card that also can speak to feeling rejected. So if you were in a relationship with someone who you felt did not honor you, who kind of blew you off, you may have been tempted not as revenge, but just trying to feel important in somebody else's eyes to have some kind of an affair, and now it's turning on you. Um, the other thing, too, with this as a spiritual message could be saying that you have to cut the, something off very cleanly, 
and not let it drag on and on. So whether it's a person who is toxic in your life, maybe multiple people, maybe in this lover's triangle, if you're seeing two different people, they're both toxic in their own way. But instead of letting linger, you have to just cut it off. What uh, it crosses you is the five of pentacles. So you may want to do everything that I say, but something holds you back. And what it could be is that sense of pessimism, of the glass half empty, of the things that you tell yourself um, to prevent yourself from taking positive steps. You may tell yourself, if I uh, decide to possibly, um, you know, break off a toxic relationship, I'm going to be all alone, and I am X age. How? What are the chances that I'm going to find a relationship over the age of 35, over the age of 40? It just doesn't happen this way. I know what's out there. Um, I might as well stick with the devil I know. At least I'll have somebody. And, you know, that kind of thing, um, maybe some people think that that's pathetic, but I don't, I think that makes sense why people really believe those things. However, if, uh, the relationship is actually dragging you down. If it's not just like you spinning your wheels and feeling like you're frustrated, but you're actually feeling that being with this person is diminishing your sense of self-worth, then you have to ask yourself, um, is this relationship at all healthy? Because it, the answer is probably no. And so it will erode your self-esteem over time. And that's what I'm worried about with some people because the the 5 of pentacles is a card of lack consciousness. And these kind of things can really wreak havoc on people's confidence levels but also um their a bit why well, you know it's funny I was going to say confidence in terms of self-esteem with being in a relationship but even just expecting good things from life could be quite uh, compromised if someone doesn't um, have that innate belief that things will get better, which is hard to do when you're in a toxic relationship because it seems like things deteriorate. What is coming in or advice is the Nine of Pentacles. This is a card of self-sufficiency um, economically, and it's actually a card of your own, I would say your own self-worth, uh, but also the literal <laughs> worth, your net worth. And this is to remind people that m many of you may be self-supportive, or you could be if you wanted to. And so... It's not a question of, I can't do it, I'm dependent on this other person. Now, it could be that you need to get there. Maybe that is what is standing in your way right now, that you don't have your own source of uh, economic support, or maybe it's kind of inadequate. So that's one of the goals that you can latch on if that is true for you. But... The last thing that I would do is just to say, oh, well, it shrugged my shoulders and say, well, I'm not, I don't make enough money to have my own apartment. So I'd like to live on my own. I'd like to live away from this person, but I really can't afford it because that's a, that's a cop out where there's a will, there's a way. And if you currently don't make enough to live on your own, brainstorm ways that you can earn extra money um, and be committed to, to leaving. You don't have to even tell the other party that you're going to do it because in some cases it might not be safe. But you will start to feel better if you know that you have a plan that you're starting to kind of um, 
make come true, you know. And uh, for some of you, you don't even have to do that because you already are self-support. And it's like you might even feel a little bit silly and say, well, yeah, you know, come to think of it, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm somebody who can be on my own. So why am I not on my own? You know, what's in this relationship for me that makes me stay? The outcome is the Three of Cups. Now, this is a very lighthearted card. So, I, I think that even in some cases, if you are financially dependent on your partner, even this could be a great start. Um, if you have kind of isolated yourself from your social circle because you were with this particular person, and maybe the person even discouraged you from seeing your friends, that might be the first step, is to seek out your uh, friendships and spend more time with them. Uh, also, just to have a break from this, <laughs> a feeling like overwhelmed, but letting your hair down, really honoring your need for fun. Everyone needs to take a break. And you may find strength in numbers by being around other people. You may find that you have the ability to really confide in someone. And the other thing, too, is that this social setting may be a place where you meet your next partner, hopefully your last partner. But um, anyway, Sagittarius, I hope that you've enjoyed this, and I wish you all the best in February. Bye.